Well, praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for another opportunity. Praise God. The Lord has given me to come and share the Word of God with you on this Saturday. Praise God. It is September, the 20th day of September. No, September 30. Praise God. We're here at the last, the end of the month here. Praise God. And uh, I'm Pastor James E. Dansville, Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God. Once again, declaring that Jesus Christ is the answer He's the answer to all of our problems, and praise God, we do have quite quite a few problems today. Praise God, if it's not worldwide, it's in our own personal lives, and praise God, families, there are problems here, problems there, there are problems everywhere. But praise God, I'm so glad that I can announce once again that there is no problem that's too hard for our God. All things are possible to them that believe. But I hope and pray that you're ready to study God's Word with me once again. Praise God. Turn with me, please, to the book of Luke. Book of Luke. Praise God. It's been a beautiful Saturday here, a beautiful day. And uh, praise God. I just hope and pray that uh, you enjoyed this day so far. And uh, now I hope you're settled a little bit and you're ready to open your Bibles, get your pencil, your tablet, your paper. Get all your tools together, praise God, so you can give some serious study to the Word of God, to show the Lord, praise God, that you are serious. You are a serious student of God's Word. The Bible said we should study to show ourselves to approve unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but one that's rightly able to divide the Word of God. And I hope and pray, praise God, that you are anxious to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord. Luke 13 in our Bibles, let's go to 13, and we're going to look at verse 22 there. We'll start looking at verse 22, 13 and 22, book of Luke. And it says of Christ there, he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. Mm. Let's look at that again. Praise God. Luke 13, verse 22. It says that as he, Christ, went through the city, cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem, then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And Christ answered and said unto them, Strive to enter in, at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Let us pray. Father, bless you. Lord, I thank you for this, another opportunity. Lord, you've given me to come and share your word today with your people. Now, Lord, I realize, Lord, that words alone cannot reach the hearts of your people. And I pray, Father, the anointing of God, the power of God might go before me and Lord, with these words that you have put in my heart and you speak through my lips, Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit might come together and Lord, make these words to be powerful in the hearts of your people. Lord, bringing them out of darkness into your marvelous light. And Lord, I'd be so mindful to give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now, the question was asked. Lord, are there few that be saved? And I want to use this same question as our subject today. Lord, are there few that be saved? That's a question, a serious question that all of us should ponder in our hearts as it pertains to our own personal and individual positions before God. Are there few? Lord, are there few that be saved? And Many, you know, many in the church today, and not only in the church, but outside of the church, I think many people have forgotten exactly, exactly for what reason, for what purpose, and why Christ came to the earth. Why did Christ come to this earth? What was his mission? Huh? What was his mission then, and, and what is his mission today? These are valid, very serious questions. But now, I would begin by reminding you that Christ came into the world to save sinners. That's why Christ came. He came to save sinners. So to begin to reach sinners, you got to first of all, let the sinners know that they are sinners. You got to preach against sin, which is not 
very popular today. And very uh, quite a few preachers have refrained from preaching against sin because they're afraid they're going to lose uh, their parishioners, our constituents, and, and therefore they kind of, you know, back off of preaching against sin. But now, how do you um, convince a sinner that he is a sinner unless you preach against sin? Praise God. So now, Christ came into the world to save sinners, number one. And this is stated over and over throughout the Word of God. He came into the world for the purpose of saving sinners. Hmm? Look at Timothy, 1 Timothy 1.15. Uh, that, 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 that is a very uh, uh, telling scripture there and, and, and gives us a good indication, a good picture of Christ's mission here. Uh, 1 Timothy uh, 1.15 uh, the Apostle Paul said, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Save sinners. And if you look at the book of Luke, if you're just not and copy these down, 1 Timothy 1.15, then if you look down at the book of Luke, 19, let's see, Luke 19 and 10, Christ himself says, for the Son of Man, Luke 19 and 10 now, for the Son of Man uh, came to seek and to save that which was lost. What was Christ's mission? He came to save. Huh? He came to save sinners, sinners that are lost. Amen. Now, Matthew 1 is another good one. Matthew 1, if you look at 21, Matthew 1, 21. Why did Christ come into the world? Praise God. Matthew 1, 21. And it says, and she, uh, meaning Mary here, shall bring forth the son. This is what the angel said to Joseph as he uh, convinced him uh, that he should not be too upset about this situation here. But the angel said, And she, Mary, shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Hmm? So Christ came into the world to save sinners. I, I hope we understand that. So now, so you to begin to reach out to sinners, you have to uh, more or less, uh, with the power of God, through the power of God, convince people that they are sin, sinners. And therefore, you got to preach against sin, which again is taboo today. You don't hear much. Uh, preachers don't preach against sin because uh, they're more concerned about uh, popularity, more concerned about uh, keeping people in their uh, stall, in their stable, in their fold, as the Pharisees and Sadducees were. They were angry with Christ because Christ was drawing people away from them. So now today, preachers are particular uh, about uh, what they preach, especially when it comes to sin. But now it says here that Christ, uh, his name shall be called Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. Christ came for what? He came into this world to what? To save sinners. That's very plain, isn't it? Huh? God gave us the Bible. He gave us his word and uh, that we might know him and know his son, Jesus Christ. Huh? That's why we have the word of God. That's why God has given it to us. Praise God. John 20, uh, John 20, I believe it is, in around 31, somewhere in the neighborhood, it says, uh, these things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ and that he is the son of God and that believing, by believing, you might have life through his name. Praise God. John 20 and 31. I believe that's what it is there. Let me look again here. John 20. And that's right, 31. These things are written here that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. He's the Son of God. And that believing ye might have life through his name. So now, what are we saying here? The reason, the sole reason uh, uh, the Lord has given us this Bible, the sole reason that it is written, he says here, is that we might be saved. That we might be saved. Hmm? Praise God. The Bible is not a book of entertainment. It wasn't given to us to entertain us, to make us feel good about ourselves and to make us feel confidence of our future and uh, confidence of the fact that uh, we're going to um, uh, do great things in this world. No, the word of God was not given us for none of those reasons. But what? To save us. huh? To save us. Praise God. And the question that we all must answer is this, this question right here. Do we know the Lord? Do we know Christ? Hmm? Do we know God? Do we know God? 
Hmm? We got to answer these questions for ourselves. I mean, are you redeemed? Are you redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ? Uh, are you really, really saved? These are questions that we must ask ourselves and we must be able to give uh, an answer, praise God, that's going to be uh, acceptable and in line with what the Word of God says. Amen. Praise God. Now, a lot of people, you know, they are asked about salvation and, and uh, um, you know, a lot of people, uh, they, they, they think they're religious just because you're religious. Uh, you go to church religiously. Uh, they think that's going to save them, huh? See, but it's not, it's not, not that you're religious, not that you attend church. It's not about that. It's not about you being baptized. You know, you can have all these things. You can attend church. You can be baptized and praise God. You can, uh, you can, you can, uh, uh, attend church all day, stay all, all night, all day, all week long. Praise God. But none of these things, none of these things, praise God, uh, can bring you peace and joy Praise God, and hope and confidence. Praise God. And these are the things that accompany true salvation. This is the package here. Huh? Praise God. So the question is, not, are you really saved? Huh? Not that you're religious. Not are you religious. No, 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 no. Not that you are you, do you attend church? No, those are, these are not valid questions. Huh? Have you been baptized? No, 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 no. None of these things, like I say, will bring you the peace that you need today, the joy that you need today, the confidence that you need today. Praise God. None of these things. Amen. But now, again, back to the question, though. The question was asked of Christ. Lord, are there few that be saved? Hmm? Are there few that be saved? A good question, isn't it? Hmm? But now, before we can tackle that question... First of all, we must understand what it means to be saved. What does it really mean to be saved? Amen? Before we can dive deep into this question of whether or not there are few that be saved, what does it mean to be saved? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's start out by going to John 17. Look at John 17, 17 chapter of John. What does it mean uh, to uh, really be saved? We got to tickle, tackle that before we can uh, uh, unwrap the question of, Lord, are there few that be saved? Huh? Look at John 17, 3. Do copy them down now. Praise God. It's the time out for taking preacher's word. You know, I I, 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 I like to see myself. I, I, I just can't take your word for this, that, or another. I am of age. I can, praise God, I can read for myself. Look at John 17, 3 there. John 17, 3. And uh, the Lord says here, and this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God, in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is life eternal, that thou we might know thee, the only true God, in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is eternal life. This is salvation. This is salvation. Know thee. Uh, know thee. Now, now this 17th chapter is uh, a prayer of Christ. We call it the high priestly prayer of Christ. It's altogether different from uh, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. We call that the Lord's Prayer. Huh? But now this is, this is, the Lord's Prayer was just a model prayer. Amen. But this prayer here in John 17, uh, it, 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 Christ prays uh, 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 him, pray, Christ pray himself for the, the, to the Father, what he's asking the Father to do. Huh? He's asking the Father uh, uh, to keep his people, his saved people, huh? Praise God. His soon to be saved people. He has a few in the store, in the fold already, 12 disciples, maybe 120 that follow along. But now he's praying for the rest of us. He's praying now for me, huh? Praise God in the rest that's coming behind me and going to be recipients of his great salvation. That's what he's praying for. He prays for his people that uh, his people might know God, hmm? No God, not know that there is a God. No, 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 no. That's not what he's praying for. But to know God, huh? Not to know something about God, but to know God. That's what he prayed for. That's my people, huh? That they might know thee, the only true God, Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent, that they might have eternal life. And to have eternal life means that you are saved. And to save means that you know the Lord. You have to know the Lord if you are to be saved. Amen. He prayed that his people might know God. Amen. Praise God. And know that uh, 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 that he is God. Christ is God. That's what he's praying for him. But now, 
Guess how do we come, though? How do we come to know God? How do we come? Now, we, we're trying to get around and answer that question. Are there a few that be saved now? But now, uh, how do we come to know God? Hmm? Praise God. So salvation is eternal life, having eternal life. So having eternal life is knowing God. How do we come? How do we come to know God? Well, I'll go to 1 John. Then we'll have to go to a little further into the Word of God. Stay with me now. Praise God. Write it down. 1 John 5, 20. We're going to answer this question. Are there a few that be saved? Praise God. But first, we got to dig a little deep there. How do we come to know God? 1 John 5. Look at 1 John 5 there, 20. And we know, he says, that the Son of God is come and has given to us an understanding that we might know him that is true. Oh, praise God. And we are in him that is true, even in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. This is the true God. This is eternal life. Christ is the true God. Christ is eternal life. Eternal life is salvation. Salvation is knowing God. What does it mean? To be saved, you know God. Praise God. You have eternal life. Is that what he says here? Praise God. To know him. Praise God. To know him. But now, again, to be saved now, to be saved is to know God. And to know God is to have him revealed to us mm. in the person of Jesus Christ. You can't talk about revelation, understanding God, unless you understand Christ. It's a package deal here. Amen? You can't leave him out. But now, to know God is to have him revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Hmm? The, a lot of people claim to know God. You can claim to know God. You, it, it, but now, if you reject Jesus Christ, then the Bible says you're a liar. You, you, don't, you don't know God. You, can, you cannot say, I know the Lord, but you have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm? Praise God. And to say you know God without Christ, pray let me tell you something. You, 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 you have been deceived and you, praise God, you've been deceived uh, every moment, every second, every hour. Praise God. You can't have one without the other. Look at Luke 10 then. I'll tell you what. Let's go to Luke 10. Let me see if I find Luke 10, 22. I think that's a scripture I want there. Luke 10, 22. Praise God. And look what, look what the Lord says here. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. Luke 10, 22. Now, copy down. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him too. Huh? How do you know God? How do you know Christ? It comes through Revelation. Uh, it ha he has, they have to be revealed to you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, which are one. Praise God, they are one. But you have to have a revelation of this. Huh? Knowing God, praise God, knowing God, praise God, in Christ comes only through revelation. Praise God. See, and, and, and during, it's during this time that we get an understanding. The revelation brings understanding, understanding of who the Lord is. Amen. And, 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 and many times, you know, people uh, equate uh, uh, natural intelligence and, you know, that uh, high IQ you may have uh, as being um, apparatus that you know, qualify you to know God. But let me tell you something. It's not that. Yeah, our natural intellect and our, praise God, a personal IQ, no matter how great, no matter how large your IQ may be, you cannot, it cannot bring you a revelation of God. Hmm? You, you're talking about apples and oranges here. You're talking about, uh, you, you, you're talking about the spirit world versus the natural world. Huh? In the natural world, you may be one of the woods. Huh? Your IQ may be off the chart. But praise God, we're in another zone here. You, just another zone here. You need a revelation of who the Lord is. And that revelation comes by uh, discretion from the Lord. Praise God. That's right. Look at John 14. Go to John 14. Your natural IQ uh, will not bring you revelation. Revelation come from God. Let's look at uh, uh, John 14, 7. John 14 and 7. There it is. And, and copy this down now. 14, 7. Christ says here, if you had known me, listen now, listen now, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. 
Phil said in him, Lord, show us the Father. And it suffices us. I'll be satisfied is what he said. Look at verse 9. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with you, Philip? Huh? Praise God. Have I been so long with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Is that a problem? What's wrong here? What's up? And he that had seen me, Christ said, has seen the Father. And how saith thou then, show us the Father? What do you mean? When you see me, Christ said, you see the Father. Huh? Praise God. The Father is in me. Praise God. I just got, I've got a body just like yours, but that's in order that I might come and converse with you and bring you this great revelation. This is what Christ said. See, now, now Thomas and Philip, these young brethren, they, they're both uh, a, a, a type or picture of the new believers, more or less. Hmm? But now one thing they ha have in common uh, with, I believe, all true believers will be like Philip and Thomas in, in, in this way, in that uh, we want to know him better. We always trying to get a little bit deeper and a little bit better understanding of the Lord. Amen. Apostle Paul. He, Paul was like that. He's a great example of, of one uh, hungering and thirsting for more of the Lord. Praise God. In Philippians 3, um, 3 and 5, I believe, uh, he lists all his accomplishments. 3, Philippians 3, I believe it is. He lists all his accomplishments before he was saved. Before you say, he just go a catalog of them, you know. He itemized them, all the uh, accomplishments and his religious background, his pedigree, his blue blood family that he came from, his heritage, his, his fame, all that. He listed all that in, in Philippians 3, 5. But now when you go on down to somewhere close to the verse 8 there, Philippians 3, 8, I believe it is. He says, when he sum it all up, he said, I count all these things, but dung. We know what that is. That's manure, amen, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection. I want to know him, more about him. All these other things matter not. They don't matter to me anymore. Huh? The family I come from, the religious background I have, none of these things are important. Praise God. It's a new ball game. We're starting all over here. We're starting all over here is what he says. I count all these things, but dung that I may know him better. He want to know Christ better. Yeah, every believer, I, got, I have the hunger. Huh? I have a hunger and a thirst to know him better. And I'm constantly reading. I'm constantly searching. I'm constantly praying that the Holy Spirit will give me more enlightenment. Praise God so I can do this job that he called me to do. But they had this in common. Thomas and Philip and Paul and I believe all believers. We want to know the Lord a little bit better. Praise God. Paul wanted to know him. Praise God. He did know him. I mean, he knew him already, but he wanted to know him better. Praise God, the power, he said, of, of his resurrection. Praise God, he wanted to grow, grow. Do you want to grow? He wanted to grow. He wanted to grow in grace, in the knowledge of God. God. See, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. The Bible said they shall, they shall, they shall, and they shall be filled. Praise God. God is not a man that he should lie. Praise God. If you want more, he'll give you more. You, how, how many remember when the... Um, when the Philippian jailer, praise God, to, uh, that God got saved. When he came to Paul and Silas and, and while he was in prison there, do you know the angel uh, miraculously opened the doors and let him out of that prison there. And he came in before Paul and Silas, fell down on his knees, that Philippian jailer. And he said, what must I do? What must I do to be saved? <laughs> Paul didn't say to him, well, brother, let me tell you something. You need to be baptized in Jesus' name. No, he didn't tell him no nonsense like that. Huh? He didn't tell him you must join the church and get your name on the roll. Huh? Praise God. He didn't tell him you must pay your tithes. Huh? Or you must confess to the priest. Go to your priest and, and confess. He didn't tell him no, no, no nonsense like that. No, no. He said to him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Praise God. It's just as simple as that. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe on Christ as the Lamb of God. Praise God to take away the sins of the world. Believe on Christ Jesus as our substitute. Praise God as our sin offering. Believe on him as our mediator is what he was saying. He's our mediator, our soon coming King of kings and Lord of lords. He said, just believe on him. Praise God. This is all. Here's the criteria for being saved. Yes. Amen. Praise God. But now, to be saved is just basically believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? To receive him as our Lord. To receive him as our Lord. To know God. 
to know God and to know his son, Jesus Christ. It's a salvation. Praise God. To be saved. Praise God is to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible said. Old things have passed away. Hallelujah. Behold, all things become brand new. Praise God. I thank you, Lord. Second Corinthians. That's Paul in Corinthians. There are five, I believe it is. Praise God. But now, it means, see, being saved, it means to be given a new heart and a new nature. A new heart, a new nature, a new mind, new principles that we live by. New principle. I'm talking about being saved. Praise God. The changes, this change is that, that that takes place in us when we're saved, it, 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 it'll be obvious. It'll be very obvious to our family. Yes, if you're really saved. Huh? If you really saved your family. Hmm? Oh, they may think you're a little stuck up, maybe, you know, so did he stuck up, but uh, they'll know that something has happened. Uh, and that may they may blame it on drugs or may blame it on this, that, or another uh, uh, but, uh, for a time, but eventually it'll become obvious to them that something, your family, something has happened to you. Your friends, it's going to be obvious. I'm talking about if you've been changed, it's going to be obvious to your friends that something has happened in your life. Praise God. And even if you got a dog or a cat, Y'all cat lovers and dog lovers. Huh? If you if you're saved and if your cat could speak, your cat would ask you, What happened to you? What happened to you? I'm talking about it's a change. It's a great change. It's a beautiful thing. Oh God, and I thank God for the change that's taken place in my life. Praise God. But now, in the life of a saved person, in the very life of a saved person, you're gonna find the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That would be the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Number one, love. Hmm? Love is of God. Love. Hmm? Love. Love. I know I passed from death unto life because I love. I love the people that I used to didn't care much about. I love everybody. I love everybody. Praise God. The fruit of the Spirit will be in manifest in the life of a saved person. Love, joy, peace, and, 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 and long-suffering gentleness and goodness and meekness and temperance. Praise God. That's what Galatians 5.22 says. These fruit of the Spirit will be present if you're really saved. Oh, Pastor, you've got a long way. You've got a, all that few that be saved. You said you were going to talk about that, but but we we got to we lay in the we got to lay a foundation here. I, I might be a little longer today than I'm than I usually are, you know. But can you watch with me one hour? You know what Jesus told us, brother? Can you watch with me one hour? Huh? Praise God. A saved person will manifest the fruit of the spirits. Huh? Oh, love, joy, peace, and all these things may be in in an infant stage, but they will grow. My love grows. My love has grown. My peace, my joy hmm? started out small as a mustard seed, but then it grew and it grew. My love grew. My joy grows. My peace has grown. Praise God. My long suffering, my ability to suffer long, my faith, my meekness, all this has grown oh, exponentially. Praise God. In 51 years, of course. Praise God. But now we're living in a day. Say with me now. Can you watch with me one hour? If we're living in a day. When people walk down the church aisles, shake the preacher's hand, join the church, uh, have their name put on the roll. Hmm? Yes, sir. Name put down on the roll. And there is pronounced over them that, brother, you are now saved. Hmm. But there is no change in the way they live. Hmm? This is not salvation. It's not salvation. See, this is deception, actually, to tell a person they're saved simply because they walked down an aisle and gave their hand to the Lord and to the preacher. But we're living in a day where there, 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 there is very little of this uh, great fruit called love today, so little of it today. Hmm? Praise God. Even in the church, even in the church, people today hate each other, one another. Yes, sir. Hmm? And constantly people today are at each other's throats. Yes. That's what we have today. Hmm? Look at First John. Let's look at First John. Stay with me a minute now. Uh, watch with me one hour here. Look at First John 4 and look at um, 7 there. First John 4 and 7. There it is. Beloved, let us love one another. That's what the Apostle John says. Let us love one another. For love is of God. 
and everyone that love it is born of God and knoweth God. If you save, you know God. If you save, you know Christ. You can't know one without the other. Hmm? Look at verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Hmm? Very important sign. There's so little love in the world today. What the world needs now is love. Love, sweet love. Yes, we need love, but there's so little. Hmm? The question again was Acts of Christ. Are there few that be saved? Hmm. What is salvation? To be saved is to love people. Is that right? To love other people, to love them. Even Donald Trump. Mm. Oh, Pastor, you had me for a minute there, but you lost me now. Mm? See, if I were to ask a hundred people in the church today, are you saved? I, I believe at least 99 would say yes. I believe that. Mm? When in truth, praise God, most of these people have just joined the church, put the name on the roll. Hmm? And, and actually, many people just join the church because they, they don't want to go to hell when they die. That's it. They don't want to go to hell. Praise God. Amen. And then they just want a nice little church funeral when they die. Yes. Hmm? So a lot of lying words can be said about them. Oh, that's what they really want. Amen. But in this world we live in today, every person, I'm, I'm trying to get to the answer here. Are there a few that be saved? Are there few to be saved? I think in the world today, the, the world we live in today, every person is respectable. They are respectable souls after they die. Yes. They may have given no evidence, no evidence of repentance, no evidence of faith in Christ, no evidence of being born again. Zero. No evidence. No evidence at all of being saved at all. But now at the funeral, it is said that he or she, they better off now. He's gone to get his reward. Mm, he's with the Lord now. He's with the Lord now. But while he was alive, he didn't want to be with the Lord. Mm, praise God. So why now? Why are you going to put him with the Lord now? Why now? Hmm? While he was alive. Praise God, this person, he or she, while they were alive, huh? they didn't want to be, uh, praise God, they didn't want to be uh, in the Lord's house. Hmm? But now they upstairs with the Lord in the house of the Lord. They're upstairs with the Lord. But downstairs here on earth, they didn't want no part of it. Hmm? Praise God. They never entered this house or very seldom entered the house of the Lord. But now, they upstairs in the Lord's house. Then somebody stands up at the funeral and say, well, we're going to meet them again someday. And to that I say, I hope I don't. I hope not. I hope I'm not where they are or where they're going to be. My point is, what is my point here? Are there a few that be saved? What is my point? When the world is asked the question, are there a few that be saved? Their answer is, no, not a few, but many. Everybody goes to heaven. Everybody is respectable people when they die. Everybody. No, you, so the question was asked, are there few, Lord, that be saved? Being saved means that you have made Jesus Christ both your Lord and your Savior. To a saved person, Christ is, he's the Lord of our lives. He's the Lord of his life, a saved person now. Huh? And if he's not your Lord, then he can't be your Savior. he got to be both of them. See, Christ, he, he's Lord of all, or he is not Lord at all. That's the word of God. His word is to be obeyed. Huh? Obeyed before mother. Before father, before sister, before brother, husband, before wife. His word come first. He is Lord and he is the Savior. Praise God. Now, if this question that was actual Christ, are there few that be saved? 
If you would ask the whole world, do a, 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 a canvas, a survey around the world, most would reply, I think most people are going to be saved. Most would say that, yes. They do not believe that only a few will be saved. They don't believe that. No, no. They believe that people are basically good. People are basically good. Oh, you got great big ministries out there in California, huge ministries out there telling people that they're basically good. Hmm, it's just your environment. What happened to sin nature? What, 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 what do you, what's going on here? But they tell people huh, that they're basically good. Huh? People sometimes ask me to pray for them, pray for my husband, pray for my wife. Pray for my children. Um, then they'll say that well, they're not, they're not saved. Uh, they're not saved, but now they, they, they are not bad people. They're really good people. They're good people. Hmm? But now if they're already good, and they don't need to be saved, do they? If they're already good, they that a whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Huh? Praise God. They're really good people. If they're already good, they don't need to be saved. See, the Bible said there's none good but the Father. That's not good but the Father. So if our loved ones, our friends, our acquaintances, are basically good people like preachers have told them, then they must be God. Hmm? There's none good but God, but the Father. So if they're good, they must be God. Hmm? Praise God. But the scripture says all have sinned. All have sinned and come, what? Short of the glory of God. We all. Huh? All have sinned. The Bible said the, the carnal man, the natural man. Huh? Praise God. The, uh, uh, he's, he, he has enmity in his heart toward God. That's what the Bible said. The natural man. There's a hatred there. Deep down embedded in that nature, that sin nature that comes from the old devil himself. The devil hates God. He introduced a sin nature into us. And that nature hates God. It's in you. It's in you. I know you don't believe that. I know you can't even. Oh, God, what is he saying? The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Meaning what? That the unsaved man and the world, they hate Christ. They hate Christ. They hate him then. They hate him now. Probably hate him more now. And not only that, but they hate Christ's people. Yes, they hate us. They may smile, they tolerate us, but they hate us. And, and all the reason we can coexist together in this world today is because of the Lord's restraining their madness. God's restraining. It's a restraint upon them. They would love to tear us apart. Huh? The hatred, praise God for us, is incomprehensible. It is. Praise God. Look at John 15. Come on, stay with me now. Praise God. Stay with me if you ain't fainted yet here. Stay with me now. Look at John 15 and 18. John 15 and 18. John 15. This is what the Lord says. If the world hate you, talk about the believers, the believers, me and you, me and you that are true believers. If the world hate you, you know it hated me before it hated you. If you are the world, verse 19, the world would love its own. But because you are not, you are not of the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. No, I didn't volunteer for this. I should have, but I didn't. I wasn't looking for the Lord. I should have been looking, but I didn't. He came looking for me. The Lord came looking for me. That's what he said. He said, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hate you. Now, who do you believe? Scientists? Psychiatrists? Psychologists? Huh? Or do you believe God? There's a hatred deep down inside of every unsaved person for God and for God's people. Hmm? Oh, yes, you're acting very civil now because you're under restraint. The power of God's restraining that 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 uh, right now you just you 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 just can't hardly stand and listen to this, can you? Oh, I hear you. I hear you. Uh -huh. It may be hard to believe and to accept it, but the fact is, our unsaved friends and our unsaved loved ones hate Christ. Hmm? Amen. Just like Pilate. You remember Pilate when Jesus went before Pilate? 
Hmm? Praise God. Uh, Pilate had a chance to do either two things here. He could have released Christ. He could have. And then he could turn him over to the mob. Hmm? Praise God. But like Pilate, people in the world today will do either two things to the believers, to us. They either will tolerate us. That's what they do today. Toler or they'll deliver us to the tormentors. Huh? But now, because of God's restraining grace, I'm talking about God got the restraining grace upon this world, the people of this world, because of God's restraining grace, we're allowed to remain here in this world where it's dominated, the case of the whole world, light and wickedness, but we're here, we're going to stay here because we got a job, we are called to be witnesses, we're called to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to be instruments along with the power of the Holy Spirit to bring the, uh, this word to God's chosen people. Christ says, I got other sheep that's got to come in. That's why we're here. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing now. Uh, I'm reaching out uh, to the lost sheep. Hmm? God is bringing his chosen people into the fold. And that's why we're here. That's why we're going to remain here until he come back and get us. Uh, praise God. But now the world hates Christ. And they hate us. Okay, now let's go back to the question here. Uh, maybe, have I got too far away from you? The question is asked again of the Lord. Are there few that be saved? Hmm? Well, just look at the attitude of the world toward, uh, toward real ministers today, preachers, God called preachers and teachers. Look at the attitude. Uh, 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 if, if, they stand, if we stand firmly upon God's word, hmm? I'm talking about preachers who uh, say all men are born sinners and preach against sin. If we do that, huh? And if we are saved, what the Bible says, that no man in the flesh can please God. If we stand and, and, and proclaim this, huh? Praise God. If we stand there and expose these false prophets and these wannabe uh, uh, false apostles, huh? Praise God. It's going to be trouble. Amen. If we today preach against sodomy, Adultery, abortion, and all the sins of the heart, jealousy, and 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 and, and hatred. If we preach against all these sins, hmm? if we say there's only one way, one way, one way that you can be saved, then you can bet, praise God, that we are not going to win a popularity contest down here. We're not going to be popular at all. Not that we want to be. I don't want to be. I don't want to be incognito. I want to be. In the background, and that's where I am. Praise God. In the background for right now. Amen. Praise God. But you won't win a popularity contest. Why is that? Why will we why are we rejected when we stand firmly on God's word? Why are we called fanatics? Why are we called fanatics? Hmm? The popular preachers today are those who say nothing. They don't say nothing. They don't say nothing. They wouldn't disturb anybody, nobody. Hmm? Amen. To be popular, pre a popular preacher today, one must be a Paul Parrot. Paul Parrot. That's what they I call him Paul Parrot. A puppet more. A pop a, a poor pit poor pit pimp. <laughs> Prosperity pimp is what they really are. Now you can be popular if this is the cut, this is your cut right there. Amen. So now what what, what do you think now? What do you think? Huh? Are there few that be saved? Are uh, there few that be saved? Since to preach these the true gospel, then we're constantly going to be lambasted by this world. Uh, do you think there are just a few people that are saved? Hmm? But now, lastly, as we close, as we close today, what is Christ's answer to this question? Are there few that be saved? That's what the brothers asked him. What's the power of Christ's answer? What is the Bible answer? To this question. Well, go to Matthew 7 now. We're going to get ready to close it out here. Look at Matthew 7. What is the Bible answer? That's the answer that matters the most. What the Bible says about it. Are oh, there few that be saved? Look what Christ says in Matthew 7 13. 7 13. Look at Come on, copy it down. Write it down. Christ said, The enter ye in at the straight gate. But wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many, M A N Y, Many, Christ says, there be that go in thereat. Then he said in verse 14, because straight is the gate. 
straight, one way. Narrow is the way that leads to life. And few, Christ said this, few there be that find it. Hmm? You remember during Abraham's days, God couldn't find five righteous men, millions of people on the earth, five righteous men. What about during the days of Elijah? Hmm? Elijah was heard to have said, Lord, I'm the only one left. Of course, it was more than him, but it didn't look like it. Hmm? Baby said in Psalms uh, 12, I believe it is, that first verse, Lord, help. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. He said, for the godly man, cease it. For the faithful fell it from among the children of men. Hmm? What David said during his time. The prophet Isaiah said that the uh, condition of men during his days was the same as it was during the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And like I say, during that time, the Lord couldn't find five righteous men. Huh? Look what Isaiah said, Isaiah 1 now. Look at Isaiah 1 and 9. Huh? Isaiah 1 and 9, uh, uh, Isaiah said, except the Lord of hosts has left us a small remnant. That's a few. We should have been just like Sodom. We should have been just like Gomorrah. That's what he says. Huh? Are there few that be saved? Huh? The Apostle Paul, uh, he must have felt that uh, the conditions during his days were pretty much the same as it was in Isaiah's days. Huh? Why? Because he quoted Isaiah. He quoted him. Look at Romans 9. Romans 9. He quoted verbatim almost. Romans 9, 27. Look at it there. Isaiah, that's Isaiah, also cried. 9, 27 Romans. Cried concerning Israel, saying what? Though the number of children of Israel be as the sand of the sea. That's a lot of children, sand of the sea. Only a remnant shall be saved. Just a few of us. It's just a few of us. Lunatics out here, you know, love the Lord. Hmm? Vocal about it. 24-7, love the Lord. Don't never take a break praising God. It's just a few of us. But a remnant, he called it. Huh? And in the days of Christ, it is said that he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Are there few that be saved? Huh? Praise God. Christ's days. That's right. But instead uh, of them receiving him, they nailed him to that old rugged cross. That's what they did. Three and a half years. The Lord so John, he labored down here in this vineyard. How many disciples did he leave behind? How many did he leave a 3,000, 20,000, 100,000? Well, the Pentecost, a lot more came. But now, not on, uh, up until that time, it was just a few. It was just a few. Hmm? How many were saved during Paul's ministry, y'all? How many do you think? Everywhere he went, they, he caused a riot. They wanted to fight. They wanted to kill him. Everywhere everywhere he went, they hated him. They threatened him with every hand. Praise God. And I heard him say on one occasion, Paul said, uh, all men have forsaken me. He said, only Luke is with me. Oh, God. Are there a few that be saved? Huh? What do you think, brothers? What do you think, sisters? You think of a whole bunch of us? Huh? Are there a few that be saved? Is man's reaction toward Christ and his word, is it better today than it was yesterday? No, it's not. You know it's not. It's worse today. Hmm? Praise God. 2023 is not better. It's worse. To be saved, there must be in your life evidence again of regeneration. Mm -hmm. According to the Bible now, not according to, uh, I feel like they might be saying, oh, no, no, no. Give me some evidence according to the word of God that you've been regenerated. Evidence now that you will experience the new birth. Evidence that a genuine faith in Christ has been implanted within you. There got to be some evidence of a knowledge of God that comes through Christ Jesus. Evidence, praise God, of a new creation. Mm -hmm. Bring the evidence here. Praise God. Evidence of a new heart and a new nature that God has given you. Give me some evidence of an indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. That's what salvation is. Huh? Praise God. That's what salvation is. Are there a few that be saved? Hmm? That's the question. That was asked the Lord. How many true believers do you know hmm, who can say, I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded 
that he's able to keep that, which I've committed unto him against that day. How many believers you know can boldly stand and proclaim? How many believers do you know who can say like Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust him? The Lord gave, the Lord take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How many do you know hmm, that can say, oh, things have passed away. Behold, all things, all things have become brand new. How many true believers do you know? Praise God, who can say, I'm not what I ought to be. Hmm? I'm not what I want to be. But thank God, I'm not what I'm going to be. Hallelujah, when the Lord come back for me again. How many, how many believers do you know who can say, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lived in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. His faith. I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave his life on the cross for me. Oh, praise God. How many? Not many. Are there a few that be saved? I'm afraid so. Father, bless your word today. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that once again you've given me to share your word, Father. Now, Lord, I pray. I pray, Father, the spirit of the God, uh, Almighty God might go forth into the hearts and minds of the people that you brought to this broadcast, Lord. I pray you touch them, Father. Open their understanding. I pray that the light might shine upon their darkness and the darkness might be dispelled. And, Lord, they might come forth, Father, those you ordain from the foundation of the world to be a part of the great family of God. You touch them, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you receive this word as from the Lord today, on this Saturday, this Saturday, if you receive this word, I want to ask that you pray for me. Pray for me that God will use me till he used me up, until it's time for me to get up out of here and go and be with my Father. Pray that God will use me. Pray God will continue to speak through me and souls might hear God's word through this frail instrument here. Praise God. Then share this word. Share this word. Do you have any means to share this word? If, you, if you're a believer, now if you're a true believer and you're able to share this word, you will share this word. But now, if you're not a believer, then maybe you'll be hesitant, but I'm praying for you. But I ask that you share this word. Hit the like button over there. Praise God. If you so desire, subscribe. And when I come again, you'll hear a ding, ding bell. The bell will go off. And you'll know that preacher's back again with another word from the Lord. Until that time, may God bless you. May God keep you. Is my prayer. Amen. Thank you, Lord.